UIM F1H2O World Championship return to Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates for the fifth and penultimate round of the 2013 season. The capital city of the UAE, Abu Dhabi is a rising star on the regional and world stage. This is an impressive city full of incredibly grand architecture, magnificent skyscrapers, and meticulously developed urban areas and recreational parks. It's also one of the world's top marine motorsport meccas, as attested by the week-long water sports festival that will include F1H2O, Class 1, UIM Nations Cup, F4S, Aquabike, and traditional Emirati Dow sailing and wooden powerboat racing. It's little wonder that the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix is the longest standing Grand Prix of the UIM F1H2O World Championship calendar. This year's was the 22nd Grand Prix in its 20 year history of hosting F1H2O racing and it coincided with the UAE's 42nd National Day celebrations. Now let's see what happened in the last round. In round four in Doha, Qatar, the world standings were shaken up after a fantastic drama-filled race. Sammy Celio of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team was tied for number one in the world standings with two-time defending world champion Alex Corella of Qatar Team. Sammy's hopes were crushed within the first few seconds of the race when he crashed out before the first turn, taking Francesco Cantando of Singa F1 Racing Team with him. Corella had pole position and led the race right from the start, ahead of his teammate, Sean Torrente. Then, with just two laps left to the finish, Corella began slowing down, his engine cruelly giving out. As Sean Torrente moved up to pass Corella, he had a run-in with his fellow American, Terry Rinker of Team Azerbaijan, who crashed out of the race. Torrente won his first ever F1H2O race. Jonas Anderson of Team Azerbaijan was runner-up, and though Philip Xiap of CTIC China team finished third, he was disqualified after post-race scrutineering due to an engine infraction. This moved Yusuf al Rubayan of F1 GC Atlantic team to third place, his first ever podium. Torrente shot right back up to the top of the world standings, seven points clear of Corella and 11 points clear of Celio going into the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi. drivers from nine teams competing in this, the penultimate round of the 2013 season. All eyes here will be on the local heroes and defending team champions, Team Abu Dhabi, with Ahmed Al Hamali and veteran Thani Al Kamzi leading the Abu Dhabi campaign. Uh, I'm very happy today in my home and uh, there is National Day also, everyone uh, happy here today and uh, I do my best in the race, I hope so. But the big fight is between four pilots vying for the world championship, Corella and Torrente, Shiap and Celio. They all have a shot at the world title, but all of them had to overcome some serious setbacks before the race even began. The Qatar team pilots both broke their engines in practice and, in a mad rush before the session ended, had to swap them with the backup engines. Mechanics had to fight against the clock to get those engines fine-tuned and race-ready, all under searing heat, with everything on the line in a sport where technical reliability is as big a factor as the pilot. <laughs> Oh, 
it could prove disastrous for Torrente, who had the world championship within his sights. We had something that hasn't happened in three years. We, we broke a couple motors at the same time, had to go back to the, to the tent and change two motors right away. And normally we have one ready just in case someone has a problem. We have other engines, but one's ready to go. So it was a race back. Corella beat me back there by just a minute or two, unfortunately. So he got that one. We were prepping the other one and got it on. Then go out, finally get a, go to get a lap in and three quarters of the lap of prop breaks, which was my qualifying prop. So we'll see how that goes going forward now. And then, um, but it's still running. And all the problems are behind us now. We broke everything there is to break. Now we can race. And Sammy Celio was in a new boat he'd never driven before in Abu Dhabi, following his crash in Doha. Yes, I have new boat now here. Of course, it takes a little bit time to, to learn it. All the tricks with this boat is fraction different than what I used to drive it. So let's see. I hope the setup will be uh, right for the time trial and especially for the race, but uh, it will be challenging. After his engine was DQ'd in Doha, Philip Xiap of CTIC China team had to revert to his old engine. Yes, uh, it's an old engine. Uh, the EM uh, think uh, my engine is not uh, legal and uh, we say it's legal. I know it's legal, but uh, we don't want to use after the war. Old engine, he checks the engine, he says it's okay. Uh, I tried this morning, it's not bad. A pilot who's been improving of late is Kuwaiti Yusuf Al Rubayan. He's been pushing the top echelons and got his first podium in Qatar. Yeah, it was a great uh, race. It's the first podium uh, for me in Formula One since uh, I start. This is ra it was race number 11, and I hope uh, we continue in this kind of result for the future. The fallout from the incidents and accidents in Doha was substantial. Cantando's boat was a wreck, and unfortunately, he would not be able to race in Abu Dhabi. Terry Rinker's boat was badly damaged, but luckily, Team Abu Dhabi lent him a new one. So the stage was set as all the major players faced some serious handicaps, hurdles, and adjustments as they went into the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi. And who would emerge victorious was anybody's guess. The qualifying is divided into three sessions. Six boats were eliminated in Q1 and another six in Q2, with the final six boats having two laps each with a track to themselves as they vie for the all-important pole position. The 2032 meter circuit has five left and one right turn with tricky wind and water conditions, especially down by turn number two. In Q1, young Philip Brahms of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team looked poised to qualify for Q2, but his hopes were dashed as Polish pilot Bartek Marsalek of Singa F1 Racing Team snuck in right at the end of the 20-minute session. His teammate Valerio Lagianella was also out, as was Zhong Ziwei of CTIC China Team, Rinaldo Oscolati of Team Nautica, and the two Codwell Racing pilots Paul Shepard and Ivan Brigada. Q2, the battle to make it into Q3 was between Abu Dhabi teammates Al Hamali and Al Thani, with Al Hamali eventually qualifying in fifth. But Al Thani was unable to hold on to sixth spot as well after a great run by Duarte Benavente of F1 GC Atlantic team that put the Portuguese pilot through to Q3 in his best qualifying result of the year. His teammate Al Rabayan just missed out in seventh as did both Team Azerbaijan drivers Terry Rinker and Jonas Anderson. Marit Stromoy of Team Nautica also unable to make the cut, finishing Q2 in 10th position. Q3, six drivers with two laps each to set their fastest times. First up, Benevente went out and set a time of 46.17 seconds. Oh. 
that was quickly superseded by Al Hamily's time of 45.68. With his new engine, Philip Schiap went out next. He recorded a blistering time of 45.11 seconds to nab provisional pole. Next up was the winner of the last two pole positions in China and Qatar, Alex Corella. He was fast, he was smooth, and he was hungry. But he was unable to beat the Frenchman, managing a fastest lap time of 45.28 seconds. All eyes were fixed on his teammate, Sean Torrente. But a cruel blow to Torrente as he blew his new engine before he could even get a lap going. That left one man, Savi Celio, the pole position winner of Brazil and Ukraine. Having already beaten the Qatari boats, could Shiap win his first pole? The flying fin was flawless out there. Tight on those turns, smooth on those straights. On his first lap, 44.82 seconds. He had it. Celio wins his third pole position of the year and would be the man to beat. He looks very comfy in that new boat. Yeah, it's still a learning curve going on. I do mistakes with it, and I don't really know the limits yet, but uh, very nice to be in the pole now, new boat and everything, so it will be much better. Chiap starts second on the grid, Corella third. Torrente's campaign, already off to a bad start, got even worse because the switch to yet another engine would drop him back on the starting grid for the next day's race. Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi was underway. Conditions on the day, flat waters and mild winds. There's just minutes to go. The pressure was on, nerves were taut. The battle for the world title was entering its penultimate stage. It was more bad news for Torrente, as yet another engine change after the qualifier meant the world standings leader would be starting down in 11th place. Celio in pole ahead of Schiap and Corella, spots four and six for the UAE racers Al Hamili and Al Kamzi, Stromoy seventh, Torrente all the way down at 11th, and poor Benevente, who'd made it to Q3, starts last. Final tense moments to the countdown. 10,000 horsepower about to be unleashed as we hold our breath. The three rows of lights go on and off. The race begins as the boats roar down that 450 meter chute to the commitment boy. Sammy Celio is screaming down that straight as he reaches incredible speeds to nudge ahead of Shiap and Corella. Corella moves ahead of Shiap, keeping up with the fin. Shiap dropping back as the boats get to the first turn. Disaster! The two UAE boats collide on the very first turn. Al Hamili and Al Kamzi have a huge crash here in home waters. And their boats are totaled. The two drivers were unhurt, but it was a huge disappointment for Team Abu Dhabi and these two drivers, neither of whom had ever won here in 18 races between them. Let's look at it again. Al Hamili turns from Corella's spray, probably doesn't see Al Kamzi to his right, and kablam! Water and boat parts everywhere as the other pilots drive around them. Let's have a look from Al Hamili's on board. Al Kamzi just comes into sight, but too late, and it's curtains for Team Abu Dhabi. 
just a little accident. Little accident. Two boats is off from the race and unlucky race. For us. When the teammates start side by side, they're very competitive guys and I'm not sure what happened in the first turn, but they got together and went over, so, you know, it's a difficult situation. That crash didn't just cost the Abu Dhabi team, however, it also cost Qatar team, as Corella had moved into second, and then Torrente had moved into fourth position with a great start. There we see Torrente on the outside, crossing over into the first turn, about to take fourth spot before he had to veer sharply away from the crash. Ronaldo Oscolati also cuts him fast, almost hitting a Caldwell boat, and that gets him a yellow card. But because a lap hadn't yet been completed, the boats would restart in their original lineup, so that great start was cancelled out for Corella and Torrente. A yellow flag can be an opportunity for the boats to get a jump on each other as the field bunches up, but Shep is unable to get the jump on Celio. And Corella also back chasing Shiap now as he gets blasted by the Frenchman's spray. The man to beat here, Sammy Celio. He's looking fast out there, but Shiap is a tough guy to have breathing down your neck. Further back, Torrente, who started in 11th position, has been storming his way through the field as he passes three boats in one go. And who do you think is up there waiting for him but Moritz Stromoy of Team Nautica? These two had a spectacular crash out as their boats went hurtling through the air back in Portimao, Portugal in 2011. Stromoy passes Yusuf Arabayan on that long 487 meters straight to boy one as the Norwegian moves up into fourth. Behind Stromoy, Torrente also has his sights set on Arabayan as the American gives chase to the F1 GC Atlantic team pilot. Al Rubayan is coming off his first podium in Doha, Qatar, and he's also been getting some good and consistent qualifying results. The Kuwaiti is fast, but he's going to have to come up with something special against Torrente. Torrente has a superior pace out there as they come around turn number three, and Torrente overtakes the Kuwaiti just after turn number four as they head into the right-hander. Aurubayan can only look on as Torrente moves up into fifth position behind Stromoy. Celio leads, Shep second, Corella third, then Stromoy and Torrente making up the top five as we're five laps into the race now. Behind Aurubayan is a battle for seventh spot as Jonas Anderson of Team Azerbaijan tries to hunt down Valerio Lagianella, who's leading the Singa campaign here in the absence of Francesco Cantando, whose boat was wrecked after that crash in Doha. Anderson has been on the up of late. Major modifications and fine tuning on his Mulgard boat going into Doha in round four. It paid off as the veteran Swede got third place on the starting grid and finished the race runner-up, his best result in four years. After a tough battle, Anderson found the opening he needed to pass Lagianella and move into seventh position. Up in the lead, two-time world champion Sammy Celio maintains a 2.5 second lead over the very fast and very determined Philip Schiap who's been giving it everything he's got so far, but still unable to find any answers for Celio's speed. The standings after eight laps, no change in the top five as Celio leads ahead of Schiap, Corella, Stromoy, and Torrente. Aurubay on sixth, then Anderson, Lagianella, Terry Rinker, and Philip Roms. Bartek Marsalek slipped down to 11th after his eighth place start, with Leo Jiang bringing up the rear. Meanwhile, Torrente keeps up his pursuit of Stromoy, but this time he faces a very fast boat, and Stromoy is not going to be easy to overtake. This may bring back bad memories for Stromoy, who had won pole back in the Portuguese GP in Portimao and led the race until her collision with Torrente halfway through that ended her first chance at a podium and perhaps even a race win. But Torrente is now on two yellow cards. The first after that crash in China last year with Celio. The second received in Doha after the... Oh, 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 oh. That crash 
with Rinker. And he knows one more yellow card means it's bye-bye to him. So he has to be very careful out there. Celio laps Chinese drivers, Yang Ziwei. Celio has a great history here in Abu Dhabi. He had just one win in 13 Grand Prix back in 2007, but it was a must-win race that eventually earned him his first world championship that year. In second position, Chiap sandwiched between two two-time world champs, Celio in front and Corella behind. Torrente still trying to make headway against Moritz Stromoy as the American cuts Stromoy's lead down to 1.2 seconds. Torrente nipping and tucking in and out, trying to find some kind of gap, but Stromoy is looking better than ever. She tied her career best finish in Doha, fifth place, and now she's going for a possible best ever race result if she can finish fourth or better. The top of Corella's canopy has come off. That is going to have a huge effect on the boat's aerodynamics, not to mention all that very salty water coming into the cockpit, and that is going to be a serious hamper to his visibility. Jonas Anderson in seventh position, but he gets passed by Lagianella, and it looks like the Swedish driver is having some engine problems as he slows down, but then gets going again. Celio is driving like he owns this race. He's looking virtually unstoppable. At the back, problems again for young Leo Xiong as he clips a roller and crashes out of yet another race. That boat is a wreck, but the Chinese ace is fine. Another yellow flag, a lot rests on the radio men here. If they can time it just right, the driver has a shot at passing the boat ahead on the restart. There's the green flag, can she up get the jump on Celio? Corella moves up on Celio with Shiap on the outside. They come around the corner, but Shiap has the pace on the outside to keep Corella back at third. Back in fifth, Torrente just unable to make any progress in his battle with Stromoy, who's holding the American off in fine style. The defending Abu Dhabi Grand Prix champion, Alex Corella, racing bravely against the odds with the top of his canopy gone. Carilla's teammate Torrente is making headway against Stromoy, but he always seems to come just a bit short as a 38-year-old Stromoy holds her ground. With 10 laps to go, Celio remains firmly in the lead ahead of Schiap and Carilla. Our Bayon in 6th, then Rinker up in 7th, with his teammate Anderson now down in 10th and struggling. So a reduced field of boats, which means less back markers to have to weave through for the top boats. Meanwhile, Stromoy still putting in some impressive racing. She's invited all her supporters here for the Grand Prix, and they've turned up by the dozens, cheering her on and having a good time. It seems fitting that she should have her best ever finish here. On lap 34, Anderson's race comes to an end. What a shame for the experienced team Azerbaijan driver. No changes in position as we enter the final lap. Celio has it! Sammy Celio wins his second Abu Dhabi Grand Prix! Philip Schiap, runner-up, Corella, third. Also, celebrations for Team Nautica as Moritz Stromoy comes in fourth. But the big winners today, Mad Croc Baba Racing Team, as we see Massimo Ruggiero celebrate on the pontoon with Sammy Celio. Philip Schiap is a well-deserved runner-up, consistent from the get-go. Torrente did great to move up from 11th to finish in the top five. Great results also for Rinker in 7th and Philip Roms in 8th, also a point for Caldwell's talented Ivan Brigada. But Stromoy was perhaps the happiest face out there. Yeah, I had a good race. It uh, was very funny all the time. I was chased by Sean and... Uh been thinking about our past together i was uh, really trying not to get him too close to me and uh, i managed to do a little bit of six sucking and uh, <laughs> keep him behind me but i had a great race his highness dr sheikh sultan bin khalifa bin zayed al nahyan was there to give out the trophies top 
of the world standings, two points ahead of Torrente and just four ahead of Corella, with Schiap ten points behind. Stromoy moves up to eighth and the first point for Caldwell Racing. Yeah, the start was pretty good. It didn't feel so good probably than it looked like it, but I was a little bit disappointed when it's coming yellow flag. I said, wow, now you never know what's going to happen in the restart, but luckily I could keep the lead and then was hard driving till the end. Yes, it's uh, always uh, Sami is fast, but uh, me also, and uh, Alex is behind me, push also, and yeah, it's not easy for, uh, for this race, but um, I'm happy with a problem with uh, Doha, we have an old engine, and the result is not bad for, uh, for this race. Yeah, it's not bad, I'm sorry, because I, at the start I had uh, Philippe and I was close to Sami, so I had already one position. I was second and the yellow flag made me in trouble, but okay, third is good, we are still uh, inside the championship, we will fight, uh, I'm not out for Sarge, so this was the point of the weekend on the out of the championship. With just 10 points separating the top four racers, a cracking final Grand Prix awaits in Sharjah, where the 2013 UIM F1 H2O World Championship will be decided. See you there.